Welcome to a new video guys. A few weeks ago Hell Let Loose came out of Early Access and got its full release on Windows. This full release added a lot of new content to the game, including the Eastern Front. This update added two new maps, a new faction with new weapons, vehicles and equipment, and a bunch of other changes. In this video, let's get into all of the most important new stuff added to the game. First of all, let's take a look at the maps. The first one is Stalingrad. Initially, it surprised me it was not a winter snow map, but it still looks great and it has a good vibe to it. It's a full on urban warfare map. It's basically a completely bombed and destroyed city full of ruins, so it's very easy to hide. You have to fight from building to building to gain terrain. The two sides of the map are split in the middle by railroad tracks. These are often the choke point of a battle and very hard to cross. Unfortunately, Stalingrad is not well optimized and players are reporting to have performance issues, even on high-end machines. That said, I still had a lot of fun on the map. The devs are currently testing a new patch on the public test server. The key focus is optimization, so Stalingrad should run well soon and the devs have said this will improve the optimization across the entire game. The team is also testing other small changes, like adding timers to markers on the map and improvements in the armor system. Another interesting one is the healing system. Instead of first grabbing your bandage, you will be able to immediately start healing after pressing F. The final change that caught my eye is that they're testing a streamer mode that hides important information from the HUD, such as player name and in garrison locations. The second map is Kursk. This map is very different from Stalingrad. Instead of an urban environment, this map is an open countryside map. It's kind of similar in gameplay style to the already existing countryside maps in France. However, in graphical style the map does look different and gives it another atmosphere compared to the maps on the western front. Especially with the new Soviet faction, it gives Helda lose another flavor. Overall I'm excited about the new maps and had a lot of fun playing on them. Next up is the new faction, the Soviets. Held at Loose had always had two factions, the United States and Germany. Introducing a new faction adds a nice variety to the game, and quite a few of them have been added. Different versions of the Mosin Nagant, the PPSH and the SVT-40 have been introduced. Another interesting addition is the PTRS-41 anti-tank rifle, which works completely different from the anti-tank launchers that were already in the game. Another interesting change is the Kajusha strike ability for the commander. This iconic rocket launcher covers an entire area with missiles and looks very impressive. Put my tank down. Yeah. A variety of tanks and other vehicles have also been added. Some other changes have been introduced as well, such as smaller outposts that make a noise and there are notifications now with tooltips. For example, if you stray too far away from your squad, a reminder pops up to stick together. As you can see, this new update adds a lot of new content to the game. Held at Loose already was and is now an even better World War II shooter than before. I'm excited to see the soon coming patch as it promises to improve the performance of the game by a lot. If you like this update on the new content, please like and subscribe as more Held at Loose content will come in the future. What do you think of the new Eastern Front update? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next one guys.